Well, welcome everyone. My name is Natalie Ashdown from Open Door Coaching. Welcome to the book launch of What Makes a Great Coach, the top 10 practices of the world's best coaches. And I'm, I'm actually struggling to use words because I'm smiling so hard. I'm here with my very dear friend, uh, colleague, superstar coach and uh, author of the book. Uh, <laughs> she's, got a, she's got a mug ready to go. Uh, welcome, Emma, darling in and joining us from uh, Denver, Colorado. It's wonderful to see you. Oh, Nat. Oh, yeah. Same. My, my cheeks are hurting already from <laughs> the kind of smiling that we've just experienced. So thank you for having us and, and being here and putting on the coaching cafes every week. Yeah, week. absolutely. And everyone is telling us where they're dialing in from. So please keep that going. Please keep the chat box going. Just before we begin, let me acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we're meeting today all around the world to celebrate the launch of what makes a great coach and people's continuing connection to the land, waters, communities of Australia and international communities. So we pay our respects to them and to their elders past, present and emerging, not only here in Australia, but Indigenous communities all around the world. So here's the admin bit. We're going to talk about the book launch today, um, but if you are new to the Coaching Cafe, we do this um, every Friday, Melbourne time. It's all about creating a community, having thought-provoking conversations, and Emma, we've had a great time over the last six weeks, actually, talking about the different practices in the book, and we're going to be continuing that as well. So really digging into our coaching and the, the top 10 practices of the world's best coaches. So we'll be doing that um, together. So uh, welcome, everyone. If you are wanting to buy your copy, of the book please do um we have hit number one in amazon categories in leadership leadership training in organizational behavior in teams workplace culture management skills and sports coaching so um it's just um, absolutely unbelievable um what's happening at the moment we're kind it's kind of heady um i think and there is one little category um that we really want to win let's face it we want to go number one in mentoring and coaching so i'm getting live updates um to see how we're, we're tracking at the moment we're number four um in that category on amazon so please feel free to to scan the QR code there in your country uh and you can buy a copy of the kindle or you can buy a copy of the of the hard copy um book um, it's discounted at the moment. So there you go. Anyway, um, let me stop my share, uh, stop my screen. And Emma, um, <laughs> why don't you kick us off? This, this has been six years in the making, what makes a great coach. Mm. Can you give us a brief history about how we even got here today? Mm, yeah, I would love to. Well, actually, it's interesting that Erina is on the line, who is a, an incredible author. And I was talking about wanting to write a book. And so she said, well, why don't you just go to use my apartment downtown Melbourne and just lock away for a couple of days, which, uh, which I'm very, very grateful for. And that process for me really helped uh, m with my writing. So it just helped me just get it all out on paper. But then I would go through these processes, Nat, where I'd then, I'd look at it again and I was like, oh no, that's, that's, it's, I, there's no way I could put that out into the universe. So I'd sort of put it, hide it under the rug almost. And then another four days, I'd lock myself away again. And or Erin would say, how are you doing with that book? And I was like, oh, I haven't picked it up. So I'd have another go at it. And so fast forward, when, when you put red, beautiful red pen all through it. I know. I'll never forget <laughs> that day. And then I put it away again for another 12 months. And then you said, Emma, how's that book going? And I go, well, it's not. And you said, well, okay, let's make it happen. So I love that full circle, you know, Erin, of course, who's, as I said, on the line, we studied your open door coaching methodology in 2006 together. I can't so the fact it, yeah. that even all these years later that you, you were kind enough to go, you know, Emma, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's work on it together. Let's zoom, let's chat and, and let's make it happen. And so I'm so, so grateful. I mean, tell me, tell me that. Why did, why did you say yes to that? <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a great question, actually. I, well, I think, um, 
really, I just believe in you, Emma, <laughs> you know, and I really, really believed that your message and your story needed to be shared with the world. Like I'm feeling quite emotional about this, you know, and, and I, and I read the original manuscript and then the, the more we talked, I said, there's something really big here. And that big thing was the over 500 coaches that you actually asked the guiding question, you know, in three words or less, what makes a great coach? And I said, this is incredible research. We need to share this, um, not just for, um, you know, for beginner coaches or people starting out, but for experienced coaches um, all around the world. I love, the, I love the cup, the mug, by the way. <laughs> you know, we need to we need to share this research. We need to share what you found out. And I wanted your voice um, to be shared with the world. So that's when I said, hey, how about it? <laughs> uh, about a year ago now, wasn't it? When we actually, yeah. when we really went for it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and Emma, why do you, so that's, I mean, that's why I think someone should read the book, but, but why do you think um, people should actually buy a copy of the book today in the next hour? <laughs> <laughs> please, please, please purchase it within the next hour and of course all the way up until Sunday night, the 11th. Um, so uh, I always wanted to write a book that was something a, a bit like my own experience that I had um, when I really discovered the difference between being a sports coach and a teaching professional, and then when I realised how to unlock the learning that lives within somebody else. So I wanted to write something, uh, the coach's way of being, rather than uh, this is like, oh, yeah, listening. Oh, yeah, I do that. Tick the box. Oh, yeah, I, I listen to my clients all the time. Yes, we do, but it's a, it's a practice. It's an evolution. And I wanted to bring to life the qualities of not just what, what I think, not just what you think, but our combined years and years of experience, as well as what do the top coaches say makes a great coach. So I wanted to give the book to people. So if you are, uh, for example, a parent, there's, there's practices in there that's going to be great for your parenting skills. If you are a sports coach, there's so many great uh, parallels with business coaching for you to take away and add to your sports coaching and for business coaches to learn from the sports coaches to to, to amalgamate the two and bring it together so that uh, even an athlete could even do their inner coach so I know that's that's quite broad and you know Emma got to pick one audience okay yes coaches but it transcends coaching because it's not about how to hit a forehand at the end of the day yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what we really enjoyed was, was thinking about what can uh, what can corporate coaches and business coaches learn from elite sport and vice versa as well. So there's a lot that elite sports coaches um, can learn from the coaching we're doing in the corporate world as well. So I enjoyed that kind of banter and discussion we had about that, mm. which was wonderful. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And Emma, the, the book features a lot of stories that actually illustrate the practices. And um, I remember, um, you know, really clearly trying to bring those stories alive. I asked you so many questions, but what's it like walking into, um, you know, into these academies? me so you you your early days of actually coaching in america and walking into these academies flying across the world to be able to do this uh and so i was trying to bring those stories to life is is there one story that kind of stands out for you as your favorite at all <laughs> yeah i think uh well first of all it's interesting you know how our inner circle being my, my parents right they've, they've been reading the book and my mom said to me the other day she goes oh my goodness how do we as parents even let you go and do these crazy adventures? And I was thinking like, about myself. Yeah. <laughs> my, my mom goes, I didn't even realize that story about, you know, you just rocking up at these, these, these. but I think that day, I remember it so well when that, that trailer was coming towards me and, you know, the sound of the horn when I accidentally uh, pulled out onto the wrong side of the road you know, which can subconsciously, even after being in the States for three years, it still is something you have to be, be conscious of, cognizant of. And I think that moment where you just keep taking action, you just keep, I believe in just keep taking one step forward because I'm just an ordinary person living in many ways the most extraordinary life because I just took risks uh, and I just had the courage to just rock up and do these things. 
and put myself in front of great coaches and say, what do they do? Learn the look. Can I, can, do I see what they see? And I think that takes a tremendous amount of, of courage, if I can say that myself. But I guess tonight I can say um, I've got full reign to say anything. Um, but that, that, that story of turning up and, and being in that room at Boletaries and having to introduce myself and my knees were shaking underneath the table, you know, I think that's something that put me in good stead for, for Nick Boletari to know, you know, to be able to write a testimonial about the book. Uh, and uh, and his belief in, in me as a coach, I think that's a really nice line in the book as well. So thank you to, for bringing that to life. And of course, what, one other story is, is you, when you made uh, me coach Erin again, Erin is on the line here, and I had to coach her and only ask questions. And it significantly altered my map of the world, my the way that I approached coaching uh, to the, for, for the better. So, um, so I'm so grateful for that, Nat. Did you tell me about what that experience is like for you having that that impact as well on somebody like me? Yeah, I mean it's it's wonderful. We we come back to what you know what our purpose is, I suppose, and how we make a difference in the life you know in people's lives. So, um, you know, that's just a privilege to be able to do that day in day out. I think, and that's what you've been doing, you know, all these years. And Guy has just said he's ordered a copy, so thank you. <laughs> wonderful, Guy. everyone who's ordering copies right now as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I just want to acknowledge uh, Simon Blair, who's I, I see he's on the line, and yeah. Simon Blair and I started the coaching podcast. And of course, a lot of the data came from our third question that, that we asked, our guiding question, as everyone knows it, in one to a maximum of three words, what makes a great coach? So Simon, thank you for uh, the, the interviews that you did that uh, impacted the book and especially Claude Silver, who's uh, on the back of the book. And, uh, and she's my favorite quote. I know Nat, I think maybe you're gonna ask me that, but I, I have to go there straight away and then I wanna know yeah. what yours is. But my favorite quote is the, the uh, one in practice five, which is energy. And she says uh, that your energy introduces you first. Mm. And I love that. I love that as a coach, as a facilitator, as a speaker, as a, as a being on this webinar, it's, it is, it, it's your, it's the energy that we give, especially as coaches and how we, we self care as well. Those is so important. Uh, so that's one of my favorite quotes. Nat, what about you? Oh, favourite quote. Well, look, honestly, I can't get past the story you told where you just happened to, to be at a pro-am event and you just happened to be, <laughs> gee, I don't know, walking along and escorting Roger Federer to his helicopter and you popped the question, mm -hmm. not Roger, will you marry me? But, um, you know, what... <laughs> which is what I probably would have done. Um, but you popped the question, um, you know, what what makes a great coach? And he said, someone who listens. So uh, I, I think that's just the, an amazing quote for, uh, um, for someone like that to actually answer in that way. Um, the other quote that I really appreciate, and, and it's something that's been guiding me throughout my career, is from Darren Cahill, so a legendary Australian coach and tennis commentator. He was actually featured um, in, our, in our last um, coaching cafe around resilience. And he talks about how any great leader can, or I mean, any leader can, can lead an organisation through the easy times, you know, when things are going really easy. But it takes the really great leaders to step up during the difficult times. And, and I've remembered that, you know, when, um, you know, throughout, throughout my career, um, that, you know, when, when things are going great, you know, it feels great to be a leader during those times. And it's really important um, that, you know, great leaders step up during the difficult times as well. So they're, they're the kind of quotes that resonate with me at the moment. Yeah, and even the opening one that talent is not nearly as important as execution. Roger Crawford, right there. I mean, what an inspirational person. And I that's that's how I've lived my life. And yeah. take action, take action. And that's why I'm so I'm just so I'm so chuffed and humbled and just so much gratitude, especially tonight, that the book is, you know, it's it's in my hands. It's it's yeah. tangible. <laughs> And it's, and it's by taking action, it's just by doing it. Because, you know, at the end of the day as well, there's no such thing as a perfect manuscript. There's no such thing as a perfect forehand. But the yeah. fact of taking action and, and making it happen, 
uh, although we think it's pretty perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. And uh, Mary says she's just ordered a paperback copy. It's going to be delivered on her birthday. So that's really exciting as well. Yes, Thanks, the book Sue. is available across all the different um, marketplaces, um, including um, in India um, as well. So uh, there's a couple of people. Where where are you? Is Abraham there? Said so that um, he's going to be purchasing the book um, in India. So uh, nice. now audio book, um, very good question Nick uh, <laughs> I hadn't actually asked Emma about that uh, we're going to set some goals around getting the audio book so uh, you can watch out for that um, as well thank you I definitely want to do an audio book I think I'm going to love listening to um, you know to that narration so absolutely and someone's asking here can I put up again the how to purchase so Leo is dropping the links into the chat box for you um, but let me just quickly share um, just just very quickly our our slide there there you go so you can um click that qr code there and you'll be able to get get um get get the copy of the book in your country thank you um emma we've we've spent a lot of time uh actually a lot of time talking about coaching discussing coaching i think the best thing for me has been able to do that deep reflection about my own coaching skills and the book has at the end of each practice the book has questions we can ask ourselves around uh around the actual practice to to, to have a bit of a deeper think about it what's the biggest um lesson you've learned yourself about writing the book hmm. i i was thinking deep about this question I knew you were going to ask me and <laughs> I I really do come back to uh, a couple of things one is understanding it's a bit like the love languages like understand how you best communicate and it's okay to stay in in that lane so for me just even speaking about I remember us talking about passion and talking about, and it was all of a sudden I could just spat out the words. And that's why mm. when we get, when you get to uh, four, which is passion, which is the top response of over 500 coaches. Um, the quote is actually one of my quotes because I just sort of just came out with it on through you, you pulling that out of me, like a great coach does. You weren't pushing on it. You weren't saying, come on, Emma, passion, come on. You just, you allowed it to flow out of me just by having a dialogue. And so that's one thing I learned that it's okay to not be a great writer. Now, I have my writing skills improved 100% through the process, of course, but I think it's finding your way of best communicating and then building a team, build a team around helping you achieve your goals and your dreams rather than sometimes maybe people can relate when you try and do everything yourself or you know jack of all trades master of none so that the minute you and I partnered together I, maybe I wish we had done that six years ago but then I wouldn't have had the data you see so absolutely no regrets uh always just re reframe things and um yeah so I think that's one of the, the biggest things that I that I'd love to share with everybody else pick your lane of how you love to best communicate and then build the team around and cheerleaders you have to have cheerleaders and you do have to have an amazing supportive supportive partner so i'm very grateful for that because there's a lot of time time spent uh as as i'm sure natalie could agree attest to that as well yeah 100 percent. and that's a great opportunity to shout out to our families and our friends and the teams um that we have around us the team at emma doyle uh dot com that are you and the team at open door coaching as well you know um you can you can see in the background here in my background for those of you that are, are alive um, or watching the video for those of you who are listening to this on the podcast i've got a massive poster that's bigger than me in the background and and a, and a huge um, array of balloons and uh, we were joking about the ideas where i just say oh you know what i really think we need is a massive poster and and then i'm like i'd like a balloon garland and then my team magically produces the massive poster and the balloon garland so um it's i think um having that team around you your family who are lifting you up um at you know across the entire process is so important we're very very grateful very grateful we are we are we are so speaking of little gifts so when I get back to Melbourne, which by the way is November 15, can't wait. I have a little, <laughs> I have a little gift for Natalie. These are Natalie's <laughs> three qualities, empathy, curiosity, and listening. 
uh, in terms of what makes a great coach. So um, so that's a little gift from me, you. And look what Nat gave me about five minutes before this podcast. What, hashtag what makes a great coach t-shirt. You got the t-shirt going and on. Yeah, absolutely. My, my three qualities energy empathy and enjoyment in another little t-shirt there as well so i'm just so chuffed gifts gifts galore <laughs> that's beautiful and i don't think i'll be able to drink coffee out of anything else now other than that that uh what makes a great coach mug when, <laughs> when the time comes so yeah i love the t-shirt and yeah it's really important um i also that we can wear our practices we can wear our practices you know we can be our practices that's why i thought oh let's put the practices on a t-shirt so anyway just a few ideas we had yeah. there and i yeah. think um if you don't mind me sharing emma about what um what i really learned i think i learned a lot through our conversations around resilience actually and this has been playing out a lot in the executive coaching we've been doing and the coaching programs we've been running which you're now running uh, in the us which is amazing and um, I think, uh, you know, it was Nick um, Boletari actually that talked about moments of resilience, micro moments of resilience and how, um, if you don't mind, I've got the, I've got it tagged here. Um, I've already marked up my copy of the book. I know that everyone on the line is probably doing the same, um, the same thing as well. Um, and he talks about um, if you dwell on each lost point, this is in tennis, if you dwell on each lost point in tennis, you're never going to be successful. Uh, and the great champions have this uncanny ability to get over it quickly, focus all their energy on the next point. And we talk a lot about that in coaching, you know, acknowledging, first of all, that something might not have gone the way we expected, but then focusing your energy in moving forward. And I think with, you know, producing the book and the different challenges we had, it, it was about you know, sucking in with your team and, and, and talking to you and going, all right, let's 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 get over that quickly, focus our energies on winning the next point. Um, and I even remember saying to you, Emma, we thought we'd have this done, you know, in three sets. <laughs> and we're going into the fifth set tiebreaker with this book. So we've got to call on our resilience a bit more. Uh, you know, the tennis analogy of the fifth set tiebreaker when you think that you've had enough, um, you know, to get the book to um, to fruition. So, you know, thank you for um, sharing, uh, you know, the quotes from Mick, um, but also, you know, for your resilience that you've brought to the project as well. Oh, well, right back at you, especially and you know what they say the the last i guess the when you can finally see the finish line then the finish line just keeps moving further away and that's where we we both had to call upon our resilience especially in the last couple of weeks just to even bring today to life so you know that it's even more rewarding as as you know you you go through those moments and then you you pop out the other side and uh it just it just feels it feels amazing so um so thank you for your resilience as well Oh, you're very welcome. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure. So people are asking again, how can we purchase the book? And so I know they don't mind me putting up this slide um, one more time. So there it is there. Um, and there's a lot of messages of support um, coming through um, as well. So um, I hope that you're picking picking, um, picking those up as well. Let me just um, share um, a couple that we've that we've got. Um, Anna, who's a, who it was one of your circle uh, of that original, yes. she's on the line. She says, um, loving the energy and passion. Erin uh, is loving the t-shirts and the values. Um, Leo's posting the links. So if you need a link in your country, um, by all means, um, uh, you can pick up the link and you can buy it in your country as well. Uh, across, across India, America, UK, et cetera. Um, what else have we got here? Lots of people sending, um, uh, sending. Coyle has actually purchased multiple books. Thank you. Uh, one for his staff members and one for me. He says, congratulations to you, Emma, um, oh. as well. Um, and the beautiful Alison says, hoping you will sign my copy next week, Matt. I definitely will. Thank you, Alison. I look forward to catching up with you um, and all our colleagues there. Um, at Leo Cousin. Um, this book has been really transformative both personally and professionally. So she says, thank you to you, Emma. So I'll catch up with, um, I'll be able to catch up with uh, Alison as well. Simon's just purchased, um, Ian's just purchased uh, seamlessly and painlessly to his iPad, which is very exciting. And I want to do a big shout out to the Open Door alumni as well, because we have these coaching cafes every Friday and you've been joining us every Friday. So it's, it's nice just to spend this time to celebrate 
um, as well. Thank you, everyone. We're picking up your messages. Um, Alex Alexandra saying she's got her copy. It's very inspiring. More people saying, where's the audio book, Em? <laughs> so we have to, <laughs> we've got to get onto that. And Richard's buying the book as well. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you to you all. These are uh, really, really wonderful. Simon says she can't. Uh, Simona says she can't. She can't wait to read the book as well. So thank you, everybody. So um, and we're kind of right on time um, here now. We've got we've got um, a, a few more minutes, um, few more minutes um, before we, you know, you you you. Uh, it's it's eight p.m. there over in Denver, Colorado, and we're going to go and have lunch after this. Um, are there any kind of um, closing reflections or, or comments you want to make or share with us? Yeah, uh, I I just like to really encourage everyone. Um, right now in the next hour <laughs> because <laughs> oh Natalie has done an incredible job with the categories and again she's done the keyword this you know the searches she's you're, you're a magician the way that you have worked all this stuff out so uh, that's why the next hour is really important so please just get on social or if you've got a copy of the book already take a photo and please tag us uh, and the special offers, if, if I may, just because why not? Uh, but one who buys 10 copies or more of the book, I have an online um, coaching toolkit with 20 tools. So just screenshot your purchase uh, for 10 books or more, or, or if you know of any large clubs that have um, or large organisations that are after 10 books or more, and I will, uh, I will send you the code 20 online tools. And anyone who buys a hundred books, and we had that today, we had our first I sale know. of a hundred books. So I'm going to do a virtual talk for their team. Uh, or if you're in Colorado, of course, that will can be in person. So there's a couple of extra incentives, and especially while the book is at this price, which by the way will only stay that way until midnight on the 11th of September at the end of the US Open final. So it's our US Open uh, tennis finals weekend. And uh, we, we invite everyone, please share it, especially this weekend. And then obviously then you can purchase a book forever, but it will be at regular book price. So, yeah, um, absolutely. So and I forgot to mention that actually, Emma, that uh, we, you know, one, one of our targets was let's let's release the book um, during the US Open. You're there in the US. Um, Australians have been loving uh, what Australians have been doing in the US, but it was really important to us that we, you know, we launched the book um, during the US. Okay, so we wanted to launch it at Wimbledon, but we missed that target. So it's like, what's the next, uh, what's the next well, US the next grand slam. <laughs> yeah. And also, can I just say that it's actually Judy Murray's birthday today. Uh, right. and yeah, so I did a big birthday video for her today with the with the book in hand, and I've got a book coming her way because she has written the foreword. So very, very grateful for her support, her mentorship, her friendship, uh, and her guidance over, over the years and really supporting you know, women in, in coaching, which by the way, of all the data of over 500 coaches, there were 51% uh, women and 49% men are ca coaches. So I'm very, very proud of that. Almost, you know, 50-50. So yeah, of course, Judy Murray, for those of you who don't know, um, an outstanding coach um, in, in tennis and in life and uh, mother of uh, Andy Murray, former world number one, and Jamie Murray, uh, former world number one in doubles as well. So what a privilege to have people like this um, writing testimonials, but also writing um, the foreword for the book as well. We have one last question to answer, which I thought I might pick up very quickly. Ignatius has asked a couple a question a couple of times on the chat. He says, as a person who's mentoring others, uh, wanting to become a coach, what top three things do you recommend as actions I take? Well, I can, you know, we might sound a bit biased here, but definitely coach training. It's it's really important. Um, Emma's delivering uh, the high performance coaching uh, certificate in the US. We have the uh, certificate for in workplace of business coaching and the diploma uh, that we've been delivering now for nearly 20 years here in Australia. So, you know, coach training is really important. I think also, um, uh, the, the second thing, obviously, you need to buy a copy of the book. That'll help you. Um, but the other thing that I've done throughout my career is hook in with the amazing alumni. Like, we, we are surrounded by an amazing alumni, a network of amazing people who coach. And I think the more that we can actually learn from each other, share our stories, share our practices, um, that really makes um, a great coach. So uh, and not only a great coach, but makes a great world to, to hang out in as well. Yeah. Yep, I support all of that. And buy yourself a copy of the book. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let me put that um, up one more time for people. Um, so that's the um, that'll be the end of our formal, uh, you know, our formal uh, coaching cafe, if you like. I'm going to pop this slide up for you so you can um, you can uh, get a copy of the book. You can click and on the QR code. Can I say one more QR thing? Code. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I'm going to be popping the verb. Of course, oh, yeah, I'm going to be absolutely. popping the verve uh, this Sunday. If anyone is uh, listening or living here in Colorado, uh, so in, in Denver, we're going to be having an in-person book launch party at 3 p.m. Uh, just send me an email. I think my email is in the chat there, and I'll let you know where that's going to be. But uh, come join us on Sunday, three o'clock, if you're in Colorado, or why to fly in if you're somewhere else in the states? Just fly in for the sun, and we'll have a good time. I promise. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Emma, from the bottom of our hearts, from everyone who's joined us, there's been <laughs> heaps of people join us on the line, uh, and there'll be thousands of people actually listening to this on the podcast as well. Hundreds, maybe, maybe thousands. Um, you know, from the bottom of our hearts, congratulations. Um, you really deserve all of the accolades. You really deserve, um, you know, all the cheering. Um, you really deserve this, Emma. It's such a pleasure to partner with you. So congratulations. I'm getting a bit emotional, but from the bottom of our hearts, congratulations. I, I can't wait to be back in Melbourne and give you a big hug and, and the whole team and, and just everyone who's supported me over the years. Uh, I, yeah, I'm I'm just so much gratitude. Very, very, um, I feel very fortunate that this has come to life because of so many people. And that's been the cool part as well, even reaching out to them individually. And I haven't got there yet, but by the end of close of business tomorrow, I'm going to make sure every person in the book who's mentioned is uh, that I've sent them a personal thank you. So that's really important to me as well, because together we can all make a difference, can't we? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So thank you everyone for today. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for buying a copy of the book, um, pushing us to our number one Amazon bestseller in leadership, leadership training, organizational behavior, teams, workplace culture, sports coaching, management skills, and the category we're watching out for, which is mentoring and coaching. So thank you all. We'll say, um, we'll say goodbye for now and enjoy your coaching. And we look forward to catching up with you at our next coaching cafe as we continue the discussions around the different practices as well. Thank you, everyone.